were out while we were there, it's like it was it was the same as if they were messing with me. Does, that, does anybody roll like that? Like if you if you go somewhere with your girlfriend, somebody bothering your girlfriend, it's like they bothering you, right? Okay. So hey, how you doing? So I went to this New Year's Eve party with three of my friends, right? And um, why don't I introduce y'all since y'all just came in? Put, slide, pull the chair up. Just, how do you? Albert? Okay. Samantha. Samantha. All right, how y'all doing? Okay. But I went to this New Year's Eve party with three of my friends. I've always been a big guy. I played football. I, played, I had the opportunity to play college football. And um, I was also known as the send-off guy. Y'all know send what the send-off is? Yeah. Well, now, I wasn't the send-off artist. I was the person that got sent off, right, all the time. Oh, don't act like y'all ain't never been sent off. Everybody in here done been sent off at some point. Well, that night was my night to be sent off. I came, basically what they could do, they would put the cables on me. We called them putting the cables on. We would charge, they would charge me up, you know, and uh, because I was always the big guy and the knockout artist, you know, they could charge me up, and I would go and do something that ain't had nothing to do with me, right? And so we had this party on New Year's Eve, and three of the guys I came with, we all dispersed throughout the room. I'm way over in the corner talking to some of the young ladies that was there, and I happened to look out the corner of my eye, and way over here, one of the guys I came with, he get into it with somebody. Now, I don't know if he started it. I don't know. I just know that I got this allegiance. That because I came somewhere with Tremaine and now I see Tremaine over there into it. Now Tremaine could have said something about this man's mama and I don't know. But I jumped up, ran across the room, didn't ask no questions, and just started swinging, right? As a result of that, the fight continued from in the basement and, and ended up outside in the front yard. It was, it was New Year's Eve, it was wintertime. But this was the problem, it was five of them. And I think, I thought everybody in the house that was with me came out the house. They did. I ran out the house by myself. These guys was running. But when they turned around, they said, this fool by himself, mm -hmm. right? And so now it's five against one. And I'm fighting, I'm swinging, I'm, I'm, in, I'm intoxicated because I've been drinking, doing all that stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. And one of them had a hammer. And he pulled, he pulled out the hammer out of a double. He was carrying around a hammer. And, you know, you got some crazy folks out here. He carried around a hammer in a double bag. <laughs> pulled out the hammer and just and hit me three times in the head. I got the scar right here, right here, and then there's an area in the back of my head where hair don't grow to this day. Immediately had to be rushed to the emergency room. Now, the thing that the doctor said that helped to save me was the fact that I was intoxicated. Because had I just been sober like I am now, and somebody just walked up and hit me in the head three times with a hammer, I probably would have went into shock, you know what I'm saying, and died. The other thing the doctor said was that when I got hit right here, it had it been an inch lower, I would have lost this eye. Had it been an inch this way, it would have hit me in the temple, and I probably would have died, you know what I'm saying, or been had brain. Some people still think I got brain damage. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, I was, I was blessed through that situation. Now, what do you think I probably want to do to the gentleman that did that to me? Kill. Kill him, right? I'm 19 years old. You done hit me in my face of all places. You done hit me in my face because at that age, we really into our image and our appearance and things like that. I, I, I'm embarrassed. I'm humiliated. You know, Everybody talking about me, you know what I'm saying? And so I had the so-called friends on this side, Matt, you got to strike back. You know, we can go get a gun. We know where they live. You know, things of that nature. They was encouraging me. Has anybody ever encouraged you in the wrong way? Anybody ever experienced that? Was somebody trying to send you off in the wrong way? Well, I had guys on this side of me saying, hey, strike back. And, and for me to strike back, I would have had to kill somebody because for what they did to me, I had two, I had two black eyes for three months. I mean, my, you know, they used to call, I don't know what they call it now, but we used to call it pumpkin head deluxe. 
PhD. Yeah, PhD. Somebody give you a PhD, right? I had a pumpkin head to love. I mean, I already got a big head, so just imagine how swole my face was, right? So I went through that process where I'm listening to these guys over here, strike back, strike back, save face because I'm humiliated, I'm embarrassed, but then I had the, the real friends on this side, and each and every one of you have at least one real friend. I have the real friend on this side said, Mac, let it go, man, let it go. You, gonna, you keep fooling with that, you're gonna either end up dead or you're gonna end up in prison, right? And so for me, going through that experience, I always tell people, young people, that it was actually a blessing. My mother, to the day she died, would tell me, son, that's one of the best things that happened to you because she believed that God has a way of getting your attention. Okay, and you can run and you can do all the foolishness and all that type of stuff, but God, he will use, the, the word say, he used the, the, the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And so that situation was a turning point for me where it was like, a, 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 as a Oprah or somebody would say, it was a light bulb moment for me because I had to make a decision. Do I strike back, kill this man, spend the rest of my life in prison, right? So now it's two lives lost. Or do I forgive and let it go? Let me give you a definition for forgiveness because people think forgiveness is about forgetting what has happened to you. You know, we all got some stuff that right now, we, 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 I can just tell, everybody in this room is holding on to something, some pain, some hurt, somebody did us wrong, somebody did something. When I was 10, when I was 5, yesterday, this morning, they made me come here. I ain't going to never forgive mom for making me come here this morning. But the thing is, let me give you a definition for forgiveness. Forgiveness is not forgetting. I think you should always remember, actually, the gift of reflection and uh, an ability to remember and have a memory is really a gift from God. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, and I learned that through losing my mother three years ago. When I was 35 years old, my mother passed away. She had a stroke and died. You know what I'm saying? But the gift that I thank God for is the ability to reflect on the times that we had, different uh, milestones in my life. When I graduated high school, she was there. When I graduated college, when I got my master's degree, you know, things of that nature. So, so remembering is a good thing. So when it comes to forgiveness, we don't want anybody to forget what it is that has happened to them in their life. But the definition that I want you all to remember is that forgiveness is remembering without anger. See, a lot of times we remember something that, that it, have you ever had anything bad happen to you? And so sometimes we'll, uh, we'll recall these times in our life. How about you? You ever had anything bad happen to you? So we'll recall these things in our life and it'll, it'll, it'll bring up all type of emotions, right, that are not necessarily good emotions, you know what I'm saying? And the day may have started off great and then we remember that. For whatever reason, we recall that particular memory and now our day is all messed up. Anybody ever have a day like that? Well, you looked out the window that morning, it was sunny and everything, you got that text message you were looking for, <laughs> you know, that morning, and uh, then uh, something... You recall a memory for whatever reason, and now you're walking around with your bottom lip poked out, right? So what I do is I go around and I try to tell people about the gift. I believe forgiveness is a gift because it allows you to not be controlled by things that are external. Anybody understand what I mean by that? What do I mean when I say allows you to not be affected by things that are external. Anybody want to take a shot at it? Okay, let me put it like this. How many of you got control of somebody else in this room? Nobody, right? Do you have control of yourself? Right. We all have control. We all have the ability to control ourselves, right? And so the thing is, what happens a lot in life is that we wish we can control somebody else. We do. You know, we wish we could control if we dating. Y'all too young today. Y'all too young today. But we wish we could control. <laughs> you say you not up. <laughs> we wish we could control our teachers, our sisters. You know, why she do that? Why she, you know, you wish you could control your sister, don't you? If you could, if you could just sit on her and not let her get to the phone, y'all be fighting on the phone. 